The rise and fall of Curly Bill Brocious, the Wild West's most feared gunslinger. Have you ever wondered about the true story of the Wild West's most feared gunslinger? The legend of Curly Bill Brocious has captured the American imagination for over a century. But how much of his story is fact and how much is myth? Join us on a journey through Brocious' life and legacy as we explore the reality behind the myth of the Wild West gunslinger. The vast expanse of the American West in the late 1800s was a place of lawlessness and danger. Men with guns ruled the land, and there were few who could match the deadly prowess of Curly Go Brocious. Born William B. Brocious in 1845 in Missouri, he would go on to become one of the most feared and notorious gunslingers of the era. Brocious' early years were unremarkable, and he spent most of his youth working as a cowboy in Texas. But it wasn't long before he turned to a life of crime, becoming a rustler and stealing cattle from neighboring ranches. He quickly earned a reputation as a skilled horse thief and marksman, and it wasn't long before he caught the attention of the law. In 1871, Brocius was arrested and convicted of stealing cattle. He spent several years in prison before being released, but he quickly returned to a life of crime. This time, he graduated from rustling to full-blown outlawry, joining up with a gang of robbers and thieves. It was during this time that Brocius earned his nickname, Curly Bill. The story goes that he was once caught in the act of stealing horses and was nearly lynched by a group of angry ranchers. He managed to escape by shooting his way out of the mob, and it was said that his curly hair was the only thing that saved him from being recognized and captured. With a growing reputation as a deadly gunslinger, Brocius soon became one of the most feared men in the West. He was known for his quick draw and his accuracy with the pistol and he had a knack for getting out of tight situations. He was also said to be a charismatic and likable man, with a talent for making friends and winning over even his enemies. But it wasn't just his skill with a gun that made Brocius such a feared figure. He was also known for his ruthlessness and his willingness to use violence to get what he wanted. He was involved in numerous shootouts and gunfights, and he was rumored to have killed many men over the course of his career. Despite his reputation as an outlaw, Brocius was able to stay one step ahead of the law for many years. He moved from town to town, never staying in one place for too long, and he was always careful to cover his tracks and avoid leaving evidence behind. But as his notoriety grew, Brocius' luck began to run out. In 1880, he and his gang were involved in a shootout with a group of lawmen in the town of Tomstone, Arizona. Although Brocius managed to escape, several of his men were killed or captured and the incident brought him to the attention of the authorities. Over the next few years, Brocius would become embroiled in a series of conflicts with the law, including his involvement in the infamous gunfight at the Oak Coral in 1881. But despite his reputation as a dangerous outlaw, Brocius continued to elude capture and maintain his position as one of the most feared men in the West. It wasn't until 1882 that Brocius' luck finally ran out. He was arrested and charged with being a member of the notorious Tucson Ring, a group of outlaws that controlled much of the illegal activity in the Arizona Territory. Brocius was eventually convicted and sentenced to hang, bringing an end to the life of one of the Wild West's most notorious gunslingers. The gunfight at the Oak Coral is one of the most famous incidents in Wild West history, and Curly Go Brocius was right in the middle of it. The shootout, which took place on October 26, 1881, in the town of Tomstone, Arizona, pitted Brocius and his gang against the famous lawman Wyatt Earp and his posse. The events leading up to the gunfight are still the subject of much debate and speculation. It's clear the tensions were high between the two factions, with Brocius and his gang being known for their lawlessness and Earp and his men determined to bring them to justice. On the day of the gunfight, tensions boiled over when the two groups came face to face on a dusty street in Tomstone. Shots were fired, and chaos erupted as the two factions exchanged gunfire. In the end, three members of Brocius' gang were killed, including his brother, and Brocius himself managed to escape. The gunfight quickly became the stuff of legend, with both sides claiming victory and the incident fueling a long-standing feud between Brocius and Earp. In the years that followed, Brocius continued to be a thorn in the side of the law, moving from town to town and staying one step ahead of his pursuers. But the gunfight at the Oak Coral would ultimately prove to be Brocius' downfall. The incident brought him to the attention of the authorities, who were now more determined than ever to bring him to justice. Brocius' notoriety only grew in the wake of the gunfight, and he became a legend in his own time, feared and revered by all who knew of him. 
Despite his reputation, however, Brocius was never able to escape the long arm of the law. He continued to be pursued by law enforcement officials, and his involvement in the Tuxen Ring would eventually lead to his arrest and conviction. The gunfight at the Oak Coral remains one of the most iconic moments in Wild West history, and Curly Go Brocius' role in the incident has only added to his legend. Though his life was cut short by his involvement in crime, his legacy lives on as one of the most feared and notorious gunslingers of all time. Despite being on the run from the law for years, Curly Bill Brocius was finally caught up with in 1882. He had been part of the infamous Tuxen Ring, a group of outlaws who were involved in a series of stagecoach robberies and other crimes in Arizona. Brocius was eventually arrested and charged with murder, robbery, and other crimes. Brocius knew that he was facing a long prison sentence, if not the hangman's noose. He refused to go down without a fight and began to plot his escape. He was being held in a small jail in Tomstone, and he knew that his only chance for freedom was to overpower the guards and make a run for it. On April 13, 1882, Brocius made his move. He managed to break free from his cell and overpowered one of the guards, taking his gun and using it to shoot his way out of the jail. Brocius fled into the streets of Tomstone, pursued by a posse of lawmen and citizens. The chase lasted for several hours, with Brocius managing to stay one step ahead of his pursuers. He was a skilled horseman and had a deep knowledge of the surrounding terrain, which allowed him to evade capture for as long as he did. But the law eventually caught up with Brocius, and he was forced to make a stand. He took cover behind a large boulder and began firing at his pursuers, who were closing in on him from all sides. The ensuing battle was fierce and deadly, with both sides taking heavy casualties. Brocius fought with a fierce determination, knowing that this was likely his last stand. He managed to hold off his pursuers for several hours before he was finally hit by a bullet and fell to the ground. Brocius died shortly thereafter, surrounded by his enemies. He had gone out in a blaze of glory, fighting to the bitter end against overwhelming odds. His death marked the end of an era in the Wild West, and he remains one of the most legendary figures of that time. In the end, Brocius' life was one of violence and lawlessness. He was a man who lived by the gun and died by the gun, leaving behind a legacy of fear and notoriety. But even in death, his legend lives on, a testament to the enduring fascination with the Wild West and the larger-than-life characters who defined it. Curly Bill Brocius' life and death have become the stuff of legend, and his legacy has lived on long after his death. He has been immortalized in countless books, films, and TV shows as the archetypal Wild West gunslinger, a figure of mythic proportions. But how much of the Brocius legend is based in fact, and how much is simply myth? The truth is likely somewhere in between. Brocius was undoubtedly a fearsome and deadly gunslinger, responsible for numerous crimes and acts of violence. But his reputation has also been exaggerated over time with many of the stories about his exploits likely embellished or outright fabricated. In the years since Brocius' death, the image of the Wild West gunslinger has become deeply ingrained in American popular culture. From the dime novels of the 19th century to the Hollywood westerns of the 20th century, the gunslinger has become an enduring symbol of American individualism, toughness, and ruggedness. But the reality of life in the Wild West was often far different from the romanticized image that has been perpetuated in popular culture. It was a time of lawlessness and violence, where justice was often meted out by the barrel of a gun. The gunslinger was not a hero, but rather a symptom of a larger societal problem. In the end, the Brocius legend may never be fully separated from the reality of the man himself, but his story serves as a cautionary tale of the dangers of violence and lawlessness, and a reminder that even the most notorious figures of history are still human beings with all the flaws and contradictions that come with that. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.